Uh, I, I really completely agree with Dr. Brown looking at all of his reasoning. It's a couple, three pages in his book, Reasoning, of why the expanse was the crust being put in between the waters so that there was still, the earth is still covered with water, but there's now a, and he theorizes about three quarter of a mile thick uh, column of you know, water underneath the crust. This is an animation by Eric Donovan from Colorado. I just met with him in, in Littleton here about three weeks ago, a month ago, discussing uh, animating this. And so, again, the think of the power of God. First of all, we do believe that the power of God breathed the heavens and the earth into existence. And so here's the earth. And when God says, make an expanse and let it separate the waters from the waters, he just put an expanse between the waters. Uh, and he, uh, Eric Donovan is going to further animate this and hopes to have it be on a, a TV special on high definition TV animating the entire thing including the comet chapter of Dr. Brown's and so again just reviewing the next slide before the dry land appeared there was water above and below a relatively solid granite crust that's sitting on top of the mantle, and actually there's a, there's a layer of basalt on the mantle, but I'm just keeping it simple here, <laughs> sitting on the mantle of the earth. And then the, some assumptions that go along with this, the subterranean water chambers included large amounts of carbon dioxide. And, and so Walt, Walt only has uh, one major assumption of his theory that explains over 20 different things on the earth today. One, and that is that there is water, there was water under the crust of the earth at one time, uh, that was all interconnected in chambers. That's, and that's what the Bible says, is there was water. So that's his main assumption. His second assumption, it, that's kind of you know, a sub-assumption, is that there was large amounts of carbon dioxide and salt, and that it also consisted, the, the granite considered iron, nickel, and other heavy metals that come, came down. Now the salt explains why there are, on the earth today, uh, inexplainable by evolutionary ideas of how the earth formed, there are uh, huge, huge layers of salt. Some, some expanding 100,000 square miles of sedimentary salt that's been laid down, just solid salt. In fact, in our country, we're looking at you know, digging down to those salt layers to bury our super radioactive nuclear waste. They consider it to be the most stable places in the country and that would be a great place to stick it. Um, there are some places where the salt the layer of the salt thickness is one mile thick. And there are, there are reasons, uh, you know, why that would be the case with the hydroplate theory. The other, carbon dioxide, explains why there's all the limestone all over the earth. The evolutionary mind cannot explain why there's so, many, so much limestone all over the earth. It, it's an extreme amount of carbon re required to make all the limestone. And God said in... Uh, Genesis 1, 9 through 10, God said, let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering of the waters he called seas. And God said that it was good. So God didn't leave that expanse just there with water below and on top where the world is still all covered with water. He said, let the dry land appear. How did that happen? Well, the granitic crust the weight of the crust, because it is unstable, just sitting there on water, would have dropped down pillars into the mantle. It would have flowed. We have to understand that 10 miles deep, the pressure in this earth is 62,000 pounds per square inch. Rock is not rock at 62,000 pounds per square inch. It's like putty. And in fact, everything is like putty. And, it, and it, the, so the granite is sitting there and there was any heavy places of the granite would have caused these like pillar-like stalactites, you know, the stalactites you see in a cave that come down. There would have been dripping down places that hit down into the mantle, creating pillars. Uh, what Walt refers to as pillars that would have been attached to the mantle of the earth. And when it did that, when it dropped down, then those places of the crust would drop down, creating an area for oceans to run into, and all of a sudden, oceans would have formed and the land would have appeared. So, after the dry land appeared, you have pre-flood seas that are over areas where the crust is dipped down and touching the mantle. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. So there's now trapped underneath the crust of the earth, uh, large half of the volume of our oceans, theorized by Wall, half of the current volume of our oceans trapped underneath the crust of the earth, and the other half on top of the pre-flood earth, 
meaning that there was large amounts of land, littler amounts of oceans, not as high mountains. There weren't, there weren't 20,000 foot mountains. There weren't even 10,000 foot mountains before the flood. Uh, there were, in fact, the theory, you know, and uh, there's, there's other issues here that you can get from the book, but the theory is the highest mountain was about 5,000 feet. And the, and the deepest ocean was about 5,000 feet. And uh, that was the pre-flood condition. And then a cross-section that comes out of Walt's book is the, the pre-flood earth, which had shallow seas where the pillars of the earth's crust touched the mantle, and there's a pillar-like structure, rolling hills and low elevation mountains, and large amounts of water carbon dioxide underneath the crust. And that's, that's, and his slide actually shows the, the mantle, above the mantle is a layer of basalt, which is kind of not, not important for our discussion here uh, today. So that, that's the pre-flood earth based on an, understa an understanding of the book of Genesis, and this understanding lends itself to understanding the flood of Noah. And since the flood of Noah occurred, it has to have occurred, then the, it, this lends itself. In fact, I even, I've also should mention there are other theories of how it occurred. In every case, the ones that I've looked at, and I, I've looked at everything that I know that's out there, in every case, the other theories are unbiblical, which means they can't be true. And not only that, in all those cases, they're unscientific and if they're unbiblical and unscientific, chances are they didn't happen. And none of the evidence of the Earth supports it. Uh, one of them is that a comet crashed into the Earth providing all the water to flood the Earth. That doesn't explain, it doesn't explain 20-some things of the Earth. It also doesn't explain where did the water go. And if it just crashed to the Earth and provided water as a big, huge water source, where did the water go? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, this one will answer where it came from and where it went. So are there verses that support this understanding? Yes. It says in Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he founded the world, you know, the earth, he founded the earth upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Now, I, I've read a very, very astute uh, Bible commentators, very, very prolific in Greek and Hebrew, and they're trying to explain verses like this and the other ones that we're going to go through. I, I, we, we think they got it wrong. You know, the earth isn't on the waters. You know, the waters are on the earth. They, they have trouble with these verses. But you don't have trouble if you believe that Genesis 1 was saying what it's saying. Uh, he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. The earth is established on waters. Uh, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, Psalm 33, 6. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. And so this is talking early creation. He made the heavens, the hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. He laid up deep storehouses of water under the earth. Uh, it says in Psalm 104, he, uh, you <laughs> cover yourself with light as with a garment who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. Again, the creation day, stretching out the heavens, making it like a curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the